they wanted to know uh, recommendations on how the next generation can get going in the right direction. That, go ahead, Rollo. Go <laughs> lift, go lift, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, what Generation Z? I'll tell you. Sometimes mm -hmm. I I see um, Generation Z as sort of uh, aimless and rudderless, especially when I'm looking at the the quote unquote Lost Boys generation right now. Um, the men in particular are looking for purpose and they have been for some time. I know there's a lot of these new articles right now, uh, talking about, uh, you know, men need to sort of get up off the couch and, and go do something with themselves and prepare themselves for life. Um, more, more women are, are, uh, enrolling in college right now. They're getting more degrees. Um, I think it was, uh, Morgan Stanley did a, uh, an article as like a full on blog post. I think of, um, it was called rise of the she economy. And they predicted, they're forecasting, this is Morgan Stanley, they're forecasting that women between the ages of uh, the prime working demographic, which is 25 to 45, by 2030, I think it's like 42 or 45% of women in that demographic will be single and childless. And as a result, not because, not because they, you know, not because they are, you know, in the, in the workforce or whatever, not because of the professional aspects, mm -hmm. the, the guys that they were going to marry in the past are not, they don't want to have anything to do with that. I think it's interesting that we will tell men to get with the fatties, right? Or, you know, like, like, you know, like lower your standards or be nice or be, you know, be, be, you know, sort of this beta male because that way you'll be more acceptable to women, but we won't do the same standard for women. So when we say, ladies, you're going to have to lower your standards, and then they'll say, well, we can't find anybody who's economically attractive. We can't find anyone. We can't. All these men are unmarriageable. And no one is saying, well, if it's all a social convention, then I guess you can convince yourself and conv condition yourself to want a guy who is not your quote unquote equal. So women are looking for what? A six foot tall guy. It's a 666, six, six, right? Six feet tall, six pack abs, six figure income. Um, if you look at the, the entire laundry list of, of prerequisites that women have for an acceptable marriage candidate, um, the vast majority of guys aren't, aren't, aren't measuring up to that. And for us to say, well, ladies, you're going to have to you know, do with less and you're going to have to find those guys attractive. They're like, no, I'd rather have cats and boxed wine. And in 2030, I'm going to be single and childless. Mm -hmm. Maybe even the, who knows that, that girl with the, with the baby. Don't forget right the there. high blood pressure. But so <laughs> what, so what do guys do? Loss. I will, I will tell you this for, so for guys uh, who are sort of coming up in this generation, my best advice, of course, is you know, go lift, bro. But also it's never been easier to, to stand out. It's never been easier to get on your game and, and outperform. Right. I, I, I hate to go back to the physique kind of thing again, but it's uh, when you think of it this way, was it 75 percent of the U.S. population is overweight? You get into a normal weight, oh, wow. you're already outperforming, you know, 75 percent of the population. So that's number one. Also, find a purpose, find a direction, even if that's not where you ultimately go. I didn't set out to become an author when I was 25 right. years old. This is just where I am. Find a direction, point yourself in that direction, be passionate about do it, something. be passionate about yeah. it and, and, and into it. And uh, I think it was Henry Rollins said the secret to Henry Rollins success is he said yes to everything. You want to be in a movie? Yes. You want to be in a band? Yes. You want to start this business? Yes. Yes. And even if he falls flat on his ass, he tries something. Like, oh, I guess that's not for me. But a as a result of saying yes to these things. He went in the direction that he is in right now. You know, he's an actor as well as you know, being in Black Flag and all that other stuff. But and a, and a great, you know, intel, in, intelligent guy. I think is he a liberal? Probably. But I mean, as far as his where he's going, you can look at Jocko Willink too. I mean, you can look at a lot of these guys. Did I say that right? Willink, Willink. <laughs> I always mispronounce his name. But find a direction and go, and then you know, take care of yourself. Be on your game. Chase excellence. Um, you know. And I, I think it's never been easier right now. We have more access to an education via like YouTube right now. To, if, if, if you want to learn to, you know, what hang drywall, you can go on, on YouTube <laughs> right now and figure that out. You don't have to take a class for that. Mm. The, the uh, oh, here's another great book. Uh, Robert Greene's Mastery is a really good, a good book for, I would suggest for guys who are. We should call it lynching drywall, I thought of, because we're like hanging it against its will. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's never, we have never had this kind wondered. of access. We've never had this kind of access to education and mastery, but yet we have the laziest, most lethargic generation. It's one of the seven ever. deadly sins. It's yes. sloth. It's sloth. Mm -hmm. And it, people don't, that's like, that's the worst. That's the worst one. I think I was thinking about that, by the way. So when you look at the seven deadly sins, like some of them are like, mm -hmm. 
oh, because it's like, oh, greed, you know, and it's like, okay, that's kind of bad, but obviously you get rich and there's some benefits, but then some of the seven deadly sins, it's just like sloth. It's like, oh, that sucks. You just sit around mm-hmm. do nothing. Like, that's, talk, again, that's, sedation. Yeah. That's another thing I would suggest, guys, if you're a young man, you want to know, how can I be a success? S- look at what is sedating you and stop sedating yourself. I, I don't think care what, what that is. I think what you're saying is so great because on a serious note, I th- and I think this extends to women as well, but obviously mm-hmm. we're talking about men specifically here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's fantastic to encourage people to do more because I think a lot of people are exceedingly complacent these days mm-hmm. and too comfortable. And to just say, just go chase something that you enjoy. I mean, just go, mm-hmm. yeah, ex- like pick excellence and strive for that. Whatever that Even is. Even if that hill is incredibly steep to climb. I just think that's such great advice because I think people lack ambition. Mm-hmm. And, and ambition is not a hard thing. It's not like you have to be like, oh, I have to pick this out of the sky, this random arbitrary thing. It's like, no. Ambition is attractive. Too. Yes, it is. It's exceedingly attractive. And you know what? It's funny. I always think about this in terms of my folks. When my mom met my dad, he was very successful. My dad is one of those people who even when he went bankrupt, he's like, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to build myself back up again. And my mom stuck with him through that. And I always think about this in terms of my own life. I think I would rather be with the man who is striving all the time, even if it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. Then the man who just goes, yeah, I'm fine with near enough is good enough. You want you want someone from Grower Gang? Grower Gang. Let's I know. Go. Yeah. No, I know. I, I'll tell you. Uh, my my friend Rich Cooper puts it this way. He says women don't care about men's struggles. They wait at the finish line and they fuck the winners. Ooh. I would, and I I disagree. <laughs> I, 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 I halfway I halfway agree with that. Now I agree with that aspect of it as well. But most women can't do that. They can't be the ones waiting at the win at the winner's line for the for they can't get a turnkey relationship. So what women are forced to do during their, you know, most fertile, attractive uh, years um, is they have to make good bets on a prospective guy who's going to be a winner when he gets his, when he starts to hit his stride. Usually I, I peg women's peak sexual market value right around 23. For men, it's right around 36 because that's the point in men's lives as if they have maximized their potential that they will have the most of what makes them the most attractive. And if you stay on your game, you're still built, you're still gonna be arousing at that time. You have the most of what women are looking for because it takes longer, and accept this guys, it takes longer for men to mature into that, that peak potential than it will for women. And so women have to sort of make a bet on that guy to say, this guy's a good prospect. I'm gonna go and say, I wanna stick with this guy. And that's hard to do because as we were saying before, it seems like wasted potential for women who are supposed to be all about themselves. Mm. I was gonna say, we have hope, white pill guys, 36, I'm only 28, I got time. <laughs> get in there, get in there. Let's yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Though, you're you're not there yet, man. I, 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 talk, I, I work with guys who are like 30, uh, was it uh, Andrew and uh, uh, Justin just turned like 35 and 36 and they are, they're not looking for marriage, man. They're not looking. They're they're just hit their stride. They're single, of course. They, you know, they're making money. They're doing the. They're on top of their game. Like I said, you're probably going to have the most of what makes you, you know, the best of what you are by that point because it takes. What it, what's the joke? It, it, men don't become men until they're thirty. Yeah. <laughs> I I, I'm, I really <laughs> believe in the older men d- marrying younger women. Like mm-hmm. I really think that's that a natural it needs to be order normalized that like guys in their early thirties marrying girls in their early twenties, mm-hmm. late well, I don't know they need to get married in their late teens, but it doesn't matter. But I meant like, you know, 19, 20, 21, marrying like a 30 year old, I think. Cause I think like a lot of men, I know people who have married for love mm-hmm. and then women you know, wait to make money and then they're no longer fertile. Mm -hmm. But then I've seen marriages fall apart too. I have people in my telegram talk about how, you know, they married for love and the guy was broken. It didn't work out and it got really stressful, Mm -hmm. et cetera. So it's like, I think men need time. They do need that time to build. And I've been realizing that too. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, I'm glad. I'm glad that I married a girl who grew up in Africa that mm-hmm. like was met with missionaries because she didn't have anything. So she didn't expect much because she grew up in another country that didn't have different values and whatnot. But it's like, you know, with, with this idea of when I'm looking at now, I'm going, Man, if I had waited and like messed around and didn't like build a business and have like money, life would be so stressful in terms of that if I had like just messed up. And I'm, I see a lot of my friends who are still struggling and trying to get their footing. I'm like, bro, just mm-hmm. chill. You can still get married in your 30s. Like, you just relax. Mm-hmm. Like, you can. And they're like, yeah, but you know, I want to marry this type of girl. I go, bro, if you're 35, like you said, and you're built and you have money, it took you a few extra years. Who cares? You, some 25 year old chick's going to marry you. She's going to marry you. You become, you get to the point of peak sexual selectivity for, for men. Right. Uh, so like for women right around 22, 23 is when most men find women attractive. And I, I'm, I'm quoting a book uh, called so 22, 23, 22 to 20, well, about 23 years old. Uh, and uh, I'm quoting a book called Dataclism, which is a, another data set. Uh, I think it was OK Cupid, fa- the OK Cupid founder put this book together and uh, across the board from age 15 all the way up to 90. 
men find women the most attractive at 22, 23, 24. So right around the So meeting. forever. So forever, yes. For women, it's different. They, uh, Depending on the age of that woman, if she is like, say, 25 years old, she tends to find a guy who is three to seven years older than she is the most attractive. So it's it's never really so much a guy who's younger than her. It's the guys, statistically speaking, that are a, a bit older, and it, and it staggers. So if a woman gets to be 30, then she's looking for a guy who's like, say, 33 to 36 seven somewhere around there and then on up as she ages and it, 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 it closes the gap here and there but it is almost universally they find women or find men older men more attractive and i this is me spitballing here but i think from an evolutionary perspective that's because women understand on some kind of fundamental level that it takes longer for men to mature into being a man. It takes more for it takes longer to get to that point, even physically. I mean, women, girls mature faster than boys do. So I think on some fundamental level, women realize that. And then again, it's they're waiting for that potential to be realized. So if a woman is, say, 25 and she's looking at a guy who's like 31, 32 years old as sort of a long term prospect, well, that guy's closer to his maximum potential than the guy who's, say, 26 years old and might not be as safe a bet as a guy who's already made 